1921, a Tibetan monastery was raided by British archaeologists who discovered something so powerful, so dangerous to the existing power structures that it was immediately classified and buried for over a century. What they found was a breathing technique so precise, so neurologically potent that it could literally rewire human consciousness in under seven minutes. The monks called it the 111 gateway and modern neuroscience is only now catching up to what these ancient masters knew about the brain's hidden potential. Here's what they don't want you to know. Your breath isn't just keeping you alive. It's the master key to your brain's manifestation circuitry. While you've been told that changing your life requires years of therapy, meditation retreats, or positive thinking affirmations, there's been a precise neurological hack hidden in plain sight for millennia. The 111 breath technique wasn't just some mystical practice, it was bioengineering. These ancient masters understood something that our modern neuroscientists are only discovering now. Specific breathing patterns can trigger neuroplasticity so profound that it literally reshapes your prefrontal cortex in real time. But here's the disturbing part. This knowledge was systematically suppressed. Why? Because a population that understands how to consciously rewire their reality creation mechanisms doesn't need external validation, doesn't chase endless consumption, and certainly doesn't remain dependent on systems designed to keep them small. Let me break down what's actually happening in your skull when you breathe correctly. Your vagus nerve, the longest cranial nerve in your body, acts like a superhighway between your brainstem and your heart, gut, and lungs. When you manipulate your breath in specific patterns, you're literally sending electrical signals that can switch your nervous system from survival mode to creation mode. Here's where it gets fascinating. Recent studies using fMRI imaging have shown that controlled breathing techniques increase gamma wave activity in the brain by up to 700%. Gamma waves, operating at 30 to 100 hertz, are the same brainwave frequencies associated with heightened awareness, expanded consciousness, and what neuroscientists call binding consciousness, the moment when scattered neural networks suddenly sync up and create new realities. But the 111 technique goes deeper. It targets something called the reticular activating system, your brain's filtering mechanism that determines what reality you perceive. Most people's RAS is programmed by trauma, conditioning, and fear. This breathing pattern doesn't just relax you, it hacks your perception filter and opens neural pathways that have been dormant since childhood. Stop for a moment. Take three normal breaths right now. Feel that? That shallow, unconscious breathing pattern you just did? That's exactly what's keeping you trapped in your current reality. You've been breathing survival, not creation. You've been oxygenating limitation, not expansion. Now imagine if every breath you took was intentionally designed to upgrade your neural architecture. What would be possible then? The 111 breath technique was discovered carved into stone tablets in the deepest chamber of that Tibetan monastery. The inscription translated to, three gates, one breath, infinite worlds. But it wasn't until Dr. Andrew Huberman's recent research on breathwork and neuroplasticity that we understood the scientific precision behind these ancient instructions. Here's what the monks knew. Your brain has three distinct processing centers that when synchronized through specific breathing, create a quantum coherence state. This isn't mystical jargon. This is measurable neuroscience. When your amygdala, prefrontal cortex, and anterior cingulate cortex enter synchronized gamma states, your brain literally becomes a manifestation antenna. The number 111 isn't arbitrary. It represents the optimal breath count that triggers what neuroscientists call cross-frequency coupling, when different brainwave patterns begin communicating and amplifying each other. In this state, your thoughts aren't just electrical impulses. They become organizing principles that shape physical reality. The technique itself is deceptively simple, but the precision is everything. Here's exactly what those Tibetan masters discovered. Phase one, the activation sequence. Inhale for a count of four, 
imagining you're drawing energy up your spine from the base to the crown. This isn't visualization. You're literally activating your sympathetic nervous system and increasing norepinephrine production. Hold for four counts while focusing on the space between your eyebrows, your pineal gland, which produces DMT and melatonin, the neurochemicals of expanded consciousness. Phase two, the integration. Exhale for eight counts, longer than the inhale, which triggers your parasympathetic nervous system and floods your brain with GABA, the neurotransmitter that creates the relaxed but alert state necessary for manifestation. During this exhale, you're not just releasing air, you're releasing limiting neural patterns and creating space for new possibilities. Phase three, the quantum pause. This is the secret the monks guarded most carefully, the pause between breaths. Hold empty for two counts. In this space of no breath, your brain waves shift into theta frequencies, the same state experienced during deep meditation and lucid dreaming. This is when your conscious mind steps aside and your subconscious becomes programmable. Repeat this exact sequence 111 times, no more, no less. The 111th breath is when something extraordinary happens neurologically. Your default mode network, the brain regions responsible for self-referential thinking and limiting beliefs, temporarily goes offline. In that moment, you're not thinking yourself into a new reality. You're breathing yourself into one. But here's what even the monks didn't fully understand and what cutting-edge neuroscience has only recently discovered. The 111 breath technique doesn't just change your brain waves. It changes your DNA expression. Researchers at Harvard Medical School found that specific breathing practices can activate genes associated with enhanced cognitive function, stress resilience, and cellular regeneration within minutes. Dr. Sarah Lazar's groundbreaking research using MRI technology revealed that participants who practiced similar breathing techniques for just eight weeks showed measurable increases in cortical thickness in areas associated with attention and sensory processing. But the 111 technique accelerates this process exponentially. Your breath isn't just moving air, it's moving information. Every inhale is downloading new possibilities from the quantum field. Every exhale is releasing outdated programming. And that pause between breaths, that's where miracles live in the space between what was and what could be. There's something else those tablets revealed that challenges everything we think we know about manifestation. The monks discovered that reality responds to coherence, not just intention. You can visualize and affirm all day, but if your nervous system is in chaos, you're broadcasting mixed signals into the quantum field. Think about it. You've probably experienced this yourself. You set an intention, you visualize your goal, maybe you even create a vision board. But weeks pass, months pass, and nothing shifts. Here's why. Your conscious mind was asking for one thing while your nervous system was vibrating at the frequency of your deepest fears and limiting beliefs. The 111 breath technique creates what they called singular resonance, a state where your heart rate variability, brain waves, and cellular oscillation align at the same frequency. In this state, you don't just think about what you want, you become a living vibrational match for it. But here's what's even more fascinating. The monks understood something about quantum mechanics that wasn't officially discovered until the 1920s. They knew that the observer effect, the idea that consciousness affects physical reality, wasn't just philosophical theory, it was practical technology. When you achieve singular resonance through the 111 breath technique, you're not just observing reality, you're coherently collapsing quantum possibilities into physical experiences. Your focused attention, synchronized with your breath, creates what physicists call quantum coherence in your brain's microtubules. Modern science calls this psychophysiological coherence, and devices like HeartMath can now measure these states. But the monks were creating and maintaining these states purely through breath, no technology required, just precise technique and ancient wisdom. 
Recent research at the Institute of Noetic Sciences has shown that individuals in coherent states can influence random number generators, affect plant growth, and even impact the healing rates of others at a distance. This isn't magic. This is what happens when human consciousness operates at optimal coherence frequencies. Practice the 111 breath technique every morning for the next seven days. Don't just try it, commit to it. Set your alarm seven minutes earlier. Find a quiet space and follow the exact sequence I've described. But here's the crucial part. Document everything. Your dreams, synchronicities, unexpected opportunities, shifts in perception. The monks kept detailed journals because they understood that manifestation isn't always dramatic. Sometimes it's the subtle shifts that create the most profound transformations. Comment below after your seven-day experiment. Tell us what reality delivered when you stopped breathing survival and started breathing creation. Because here's what I know. Once you experience the neurological rewiring that comes from this ancient technique, you'll never look at your breath or your potential the same way again. The question isn't whether this works. The question is whether you're ready to discover what becomes possible when you stop living by accident and start breathing by design. But there's something else about the 111th breath that I haven't told you yet, something the monks considered so sacred they only shared it with 